Ryan Kibler playing against Tom Ross. Now, how many dragons do you think are going to be involved in this match? Well, Kibler definitely is playing dragons. I knew that before looking at the deck list. Uh, yeah, he's, he, when he's having me his deck list, he's just like, how can I not play this? He's playing the Naya Dragons list. Naya Dragons yeah. is just sort of the two things he's been famous for historically, Naya colored decks and dragon flavored decks. One of They win a giant tournament over the weekend, so yes, Brian is running the same deck as Kenji. We could actually get a mirror match in the semis if Brian wins this. So despite Brian playing the Naya Dragons deck, he what looks like has six dragons in his deck versus Tom has got, he's got the full ten. <laughs> Tom's playing green red dragons and has the two dragon lord of Tarkas plus four thunder black region and four uh, storm breath dragons. So this, this is the most dragons we've had in one match. I, I have to assume. Pretty sure, and yeah, both players have three havens as well. There's Tom Ross, green red dragons. This was kind of a big player, but right after dragons of Tarkir came out, haven't seen a lot from it. I don't know if something about the meta game has shifted to make Tom think that this deck is going to come out. We'll certainly ask him about it if he wins with it. Um, but yeah, this is sort of Chris Van Meter tech from way back at the beginning of the season. Yeah, we haven't we haven't seen as much of this deck lately. You're right. Yeah, even before the Pro Tour, this was one. Of, this was the Dragon deck that was, that made a noise even before we got to Pro Tour Dragons of Tarkir. But still, seems fine. I mean, the big mana decks have been doing well lately. You ramp into a whole bunch of dragons, so that is Tom's plan. He's basically the Naya Dragons list, but with more dragons. But he doesn't have Dramoka. Dramoka. It's funny because Dramoka uh, actually not as good against the storm breath dragons as, as a giant dragon would be but still quite a quite a powerful threat in this matchup so it's interesting that tom doesn't have access to it interesting we can look at uh brian's deck we've seen the list before with a different name on the top of it but yeah, and here is the dramoka so dramoka again pretty impactful but storm breath does win in a fight or, or rather, the fight can't happen on one side of it. I guess it's I guess it's kind of a standoff. So then it's interesting to see if that if that ends up happening. Do the hidden dragon slayers do anything here? They can't slay Stormbreath Dragon again. I, I'm having there's a lot of flavor problems with this hidden dragon slayer card. <laughs> there's literally a dragon it can't slay, it. but it can slay Thunderbrick Region and it can slay Tarka. So both those things are are, are pretty great. Also, Kibler has a much better chance of killing opposing dragons than. Than Tom seems to, because Roast is not really where you want to be against dragons. Though it does kill Whisper ones. Yeah, I would think that uh, Draconic Roar is also in a pretty bad spot here. Definitely. It does, you can pick off an L for a more face down Dragon Slayer or what have you, but yeah, in general, it's not the most powerful of, of rule spells. So who do you like in the matchup? I actually think Tom's got maybe a slight edge here, because. Tom, just playing a deck that's a little bit faster in the Storm Breath is just so good against this deck. Even e even though the, you know, Kibler's Dragons cost more, the Storm Breath still kind of wins in a fight. Or at least evades the fight for a while. Tarka does win eventually, but that costs seven, Storm Breath costs five. So I, I, think, I have to say that Tom has a slight edge, but again, it's very close, just like the last matchup. Fair enough. I mean, if it does come down to a Tarka, Brian's up one, three Tarkas to two. Also, he's the Dragon Master. Doesn't he get any bonus points for being Brian Kibler, the Dragon Master? Uh, I don't know how that translates into match win percentage, but <laughs> <laughs> sure, we'll, we'll give him some bonus points. All right. His points mean absolutely nothing here. I, it's like, whose line is it anyway or something? I was not... I love the Dragon v. Dragon match. This should be fun. I, uh... I've certainly been enjoying this era of standard. Seems like all kinds of cool things are going on. The other thing going on here uh, within the context of our tournament is that Brian is eliminated from playoff contention if he loses this. Now, that'll be true even if he wins this. I think we'll get to say the same thing in the semis and maybe even the finals, depending on what else happens. But Brian currently in last place, uh, not only does he require a win here if he wants to get into playoff contention. He also wants to avoid that 8th place, because next time we run back Standard Super League, whoever finishes 8th here will not be invited to participate. Yeah, this is a big match for Brian, and it looks like it's begun. Let's get down there.
Yeah, Tom, meanwhile, in the standings, he's sitting on 60 coming in. He was fourth place coming in, five points behind Paul. Paul has, of course, won via Kenji anyway. But Jerry has lost. I don't know, win here puts Tom in a flat-footed tie with Jerry for third. Yeah, and, and I imagine, you know, if Paul were to root for someone here, he would be rooting for Kibler because he wants as few people cl close to him in the standings to win. Yeah. And so far, so far, he... You know, Owen winning is great news for Paul, and uh, Josh losing is, is uh, you know, obviously quite good news considering that was his match. But <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the people directly above and directly below Paul both both lost. So, or I guess not counting Tom. So that, that that's pretty big. If if Tom now loses here, things are looking very good for Paul. So Tom being on the on the play is is pretty nice here. I assume those are both Dragonlord Dramokas, but. In Kibler's hand, but Tom is going to get to play Rattleclaw and then Draconic Roar, Crater's Claws, Kibler's Rattleclaw. So if Tom can find a, a four or five mana dragon here, I think Tom's in pretty good shape. If he cannot, then he's not going to be able to do as much in, before Kibler plays anything. And also with the t double Valor stance, Tom really just needs to find Storm Breath. It's just his best card in the matchup. If Tom can draw lots of Storm Breaths, I think he does d reasonably well here. Dueling Rattleclaws? Uh, again, not 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 for long. I suspect Stormbreath would be perfect here because Draconic Roar would deal an extra three damage. Like it, it would all come up, Tom Ross. But How about the question, that? yeah, the question is, do you actually play the Den Protector here? You could just run out one of your Den Protectors face up. Oh, in addition to Draconic Roar. Mm-hmm. Because I I think it's pretty high priority casting Draconic Roar. Any deck with yes. Rattleclaw Mystic, especially off of a forest in a colorless land, essentially, you really <laughs> want to kill that Rattleclaw. So. I would definitely be killing Rattleclaw, and I, I would probably do it with Draconic Roar. The question is whether you want to play Face of Den Protector. I kind of don't hate it. It seems reasonable to just get your clock a little bit faster, and if you your Den Protector dies, you can just get, start chaining Den Protectors anyway. So it's the presence of the second Den Protector that makes the, the first one face up into a viable option? I think that makes it a lot more reasonable. Tom also has Crater's Claws and Den Protector and second Den Protector. He's got a lot of late-game cards, so... Playing one of the Den Protectors, especially if you can get a couple damage in with it, then that, that works out a lot better. It looks like Tom is just going to save his Draconic Roar, hoping to draw a dragon later, I suppose. Yeah, he uses the Crater's Claw to dispatch Rattleclaw Mystic and gets his attack on rather than play a Den Protector. All reasonable. Yeah, I think, I think these are quite reasonable decisions. So it's funny here, if Tom goes to Draconic Roar, the Elvish Mystic, I think Kipper will Valor stands to save it. You've got double Valor stamps burning a hole in your pocket, and you really, really want to cast these, these Dragon Lords. Now, Tom should Draconic Roar, though, right? I mean, he's I would just a creature. I would imagine so. It's not going to work out all that well for him. Then Tom plays like a face down Den Protector, I suppose. He could play a face down Rattleclaw. But I think it all starts with Draconic Roar here. Yep. Kill your Elvish Mystic. Yeah, there's no way Kibler does not cast Valor Stance. It's funny, Tom wasn't attacking this turn anyway, but <laughs> definitely no, made definitely that option. Attack. Yeah, I definitely made that option not a good one. Well, the good thing for Tom is that Kibler can't actually cast anything next turn without a red source. He can't cast Xenagos, and Dromoko's not actually castable at uh, at five mana anyway. So if Kibler just like draws a spell he can't cast and just has to ship the turn, well, Temple is not not the it's worst. The red source. Tom has another opportunity to to kill the, the Elvish Mystic here, though this time he might actually wait to upkeep just to play around the second Valor stance here. Which I think he should have done last time as well. If he wasn't going to attack, you might as well wait till upkeep. It taps Kibler's man on his main phase. It wouldn't have ended up mattering at all because Kibler had nothing to play here. Actually, that's not true. It would have made it so Kibler couldn't cast his second Valor stance. So that you don't really expect the Valor stance. That's not a common play. So I, I could see that uh, why you know it ended up playing out the way it did. But it actually did matter here.
The good thing is Den Protector is very good against Xenoghost. Thunderbreak Regent. Thunderbreak Regent is a card. You would have loved to have it before, but... Uh, Tom's got five mana. So he can't do Thunderbreak and anything else. Yeah, and Tom has to know that Kibler's playing this Dragon's deck at this point. Tom is someone who's well-versed in Standard, and he, you know, he was playing at the Invitational last week. Like, yep. I, would, I would be shocked if Tom didn't know about that, in which case the fear of a Dragon Lord coming down next turn is very real since Tom can't really beat a Jamoka. I don't know, I like... So you, like, flip Den Protector, burn the Mystic again? I actually like just attack with both. If Kilbur blocks, you <laughs> trade Rattleclaw. Sure. If Kilbur doesn't block, then you're, you're good, too. Because here, I, like, flip Den Protector, get back uh, Draconic Roar, and then just pass the turn and Draconic Roar upkeep. Alternately, Tom could be going for... Okay, I was going to say going for, like, Thunderbreak and then next turn uh, using something like... Uh, the Crater's Claws, but... It looks like Tom is just going to go yeah, aggro. Foothills. Well, that explains why he didn't attack with the Rattle Claw. So if yeah. Kipper has an untapped land, he gets to play a Dragon Lord, which it's going to be pretty tough for Tom to beat here. Yeah, flips Den Protector, gets the Wooded Foothills. That's the fourth land he needs for a Thunderbreak region. If Brian can draw a land, though, he can Windmill Slam Dragon Lord Dromaka. It's bigger than Thunderbreak. It... My own Thunderbreak's going to die to the Valor Stance anyway. Yeah, Brian's in great shape if he can draw a land, and he does. Haven of the Spirit Dragon. Down comes Dromaka. Yeah, that's going to make things pretty difficult for Tom. Well, you know, <laughs> Stormbreath Dragon is, is the draw you want here. Just like Stormbreath Go makes it so you don't get attacked by Dromoka, and then Kibler's next turn is like playing a Xenagos, and then you can go Den Protector, get back Crater's Claws, and and set up killing the, the Dragon Lord. Crater's Claws actually can take down Dromoka with the help of a, a Stormbreath Dragon there. Mm. Wow. Storm Breath was just what Tom needed. I think they both top decked that sequence, right? Seems all right. Now what does Brian do? It looks like he's playing Corsair, but you don't want to tap the Temple of Abandon there. Yeah, you want to just play Corsair, try to hit an untapped green or red source to play Xenagos here. And success. Yeah. And shuffle away a plan. So yeah, that worked out very well for him. Oh, the planes that would have been on top of his library turns into a Tarka. That seems better somehow. Yeah, Kibler's in pretty good shape now. The, once this deck gets rolling, it is tough to go over the top. And Tom's deck is the one that, you know, if imagine if Tom had a, a Storm Breath on turn four instead of just like Draconic War play a Dane Protector or that sort of thing. Tom would actually be in really good shape, but it, because he wasn't able to apply pressure, once Kibler starts casting you know, Dromakas and Atarkas, then the game usually is going to trend towards his favor. We should try to get Brian's top card of his library moved over toward his library. Tom does have Draconic Roar. Yeah. Tom's kind of close to killing Brian here. He can uh, attack for seven, put Brian down to five. Okay. But then, but then next turn, Brian goes up to ten after Atarkaing. Yeah, that seems like it's going to be pretty tough. If Tom leaves Storm Breath on defense, though, then Dramaka still can't brawl. Well, yeah, but Atarka is going to come down and devour it, is the problem. Yeah. Tom doesn't have enough mana to, to Monstrous. And if he had one more mana, he could he could Monstrous try to get out of that. But Basically, what you're saying is that Storm Breath is the middle of the curve here. Kind of a medium-sized creature. Stormbreath, again, overperforms for how much it costs. It's just, you know, it's protected from Valor Stance. It's protected from uh, Dromoka, but it still is going to fall behind when Kibler's casting six and seven mana spells here. All right. Face down dead protector makes a lot of sense for Tom Ross. And, and then, then... Okay. He's going to attack with Stormbreath. 
if you kill Elvish Mystic and Xenoghost, then it's not a guarantee that uh, Kilbert gets to cast Atarka here. All right, well, he's killed Xenoghost. That's what Storm Breath attacked for. He does have a Draconic Roar that can take out the Mystic. Is that the plan? It's a pretty yeah. good plan. It would have been better to just use the Draconic Roar's damage to take out Xenoghost and attack Kibber directly. But <laughs> The other Xenoghost now on top of Brian's library. The God of Revels. The lesser known. To now... I mean, Kibber does get to smash... He can actually, yeah, he could smash with Dromoka, hit up, go up to 14, and then he could just play another one to untap Dromoka. <laughs> Tom's plan basically worked, though. He needed Brian to not have land on top of his library, and then he's holding off Atarka. So Tom then gets to flip and... Oh, the attack with the token? I guess that is actually pretty, is fine, because... Tom can't, or you can't block any of the Den Protectors anyway. Tom gets to flip, get back Den Protector. He could create, attack Kibler down to 10, down to 7. Yeah, how close is Crater's Claws to just winning this game? It's close. So Kibler's going to play the second look Dragon Lord in order to untap the Dragon Lord. <laughs> sure. This means that Rattleclaw, well, means he's got his untapped. Yeah, it means the Den Protectors can't get in here. Still, if Tom flips, then both Den Protectors... Oh, I guess the, the Dromaka can block the Den Protectors. That's what's going on. All right, now what? Tom's kind of in the same spot where he just has to hope Kibler can't read, uh, play a land. He can... Crater's Claws deals five. If he flips, it gets Crater's Claws. Yeah. So he can kill... He could kill the Corsair, but then I don't know what his path to victory is from there. I think you kind of need to kill Dromoka. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I like just playing Rattleclaw face down. I don't think the Death Mist is super relevant. And then passing with Den Protector up and then end of turn, get back Crater's Claws. Untap Crater's Claws and just hope that Kibber never plays another land. No, he's still not playing one this turn. does get to play the God of Revels, though. And he can have both versions of Xenogos out at once. <laughs> <laughs> Matchup is just full of flavor fails. Yeah, I know. It's 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 really a, a shame. Slayer, can't slay dragons. Does Xenogos, the God version, actually do anything here? <laughs> it means the no. two can attack? Yeah, it doesn't do a ton. Token does get to get in, but I don't think Tom's life total is a huge factor here. Alright, 4-4 four, four token heading over. Tom's actually pretty close to just getting to Fireball Kibler out. Yeah, I mean, Crater's Claw steals 7, right? Without a land. It does 8 with a land. And then sure. fl flipping Rattleclaw Mystic is another 2. Oh, I forgot that one of those is a Rattleclaw. Right. So, so Stormbreath gets him... If he draws a land, can he deal 10? He can attack yeah. with Stormbreath and then it, flip Rattleclaw, deal 10? If Tom draws an untapped land, he can win. Had he Draconic Roared the Xenoghost and attacked Kibber directly, he would already just be able to win. But either e either way, Tom is a land short of winning right now. And it's not actually clear that he loses even if he doesn't hit here. I mean, land for a Tarka is the thing Tom's living in fear of. As soon as Brian can play a Tarka, things if, get yeah, worse for Tom. If Brian plays a Tarka and then right. gets to Xenoghost the, the Dromaka and then attack, yeah, that's clearly a very... Oh, very it's a Rattleclaw. <laughs> it's not quite mana right now. Well, Tom can... Let's see. He can just pass... And use flipped rattleclaw to monstrous storm breath, mm -hmm. and that way, Kibler can't Atarka the storm breath to death, and then, oh. and then next turn you get to attack. But then the, if there's an Atarka in play, it can block the storm breath. So that's pretty bad. He can also kill Dramaka. He can, which lets you attack with all the the den protectors. So that's pretty good. I think I'd probably just kill Dramaka here. 
Dremel cut he, because he has an attack for ten if he does that. Yeah, he gets to smash for ten. Though you didn't, you then just die to Atarka because Xenagos gives it haste. But, oh yeah, it's haste. But I Atarka. think but I, mean, I think you die to Atarka anyway. I think Xenagos yeah. giving it haste is already enough. I mean, Atarka even without haste beats you, doesn't it? Yeah. So I think given that you're dead to that, no matter what, I kind of like just fireballing. You know, Crater's calling the Dragon Lord and hitting for ten. Ryan have a land yet? There's the land. So I think Tom has taken the best line against Brian hitting land into a Tarka, which is having the ability to monstrous the Storm Breath Dragon. Yes, except presumably the Atarka still just wins the game off getting plus eight plus eight in, in haste. So I don't think you can beat a land being on top, since I don't think you can uh if you couldn't beat a land, then Kill Dramoka, crunch for 10. Yeah. Was probably and, and Atarka has trample. Like, Xenogos doesn't grant trample, but Atarka, you know, Tarka, Tarka has flample, Marshall Suckcliffe would tell you. I don't, I don't, I don't, uh, you know, recognize the validity of that term. <laughs> so Tom does get to monstrous here, but I don't think that'll be enough. Oh, by the way, Xenagos God of Revels is alive now. Which is funny. Exactly seven pips. Two dragons into the red zone. Only one Storm Breath available on defense. And yeah, Dragonlord Atarka is rather large, thanks to the God of Revels. So Brian Kibler wins. Yeah, to get that land for Tarka. I like the way Tom played that. I mean, he by killing the Mystic, he sort of fended off a Tarka, fended off a Tarka, but eventually Brian found the mana and uh, Dragonlord of Tarka is just bigger than anything Tom's got in his deck. T Tom was a point short that he left on the table, though. That that was the whole game right there. So, and so that point short remind us what this was. There was the turn where Tom used Storm Breath to kill Xenagos and then Draconic Roar to kill Elvish Mystic, and then did three. Whereas instead, he could have used redirected the three from Draconic Core to Xenagos, attack for four. And then he ended up being one point short of Crater, casting Crater Claws for the win like three turns later. Because so. on that last turn, he could have flipped Rattle Claw. He could have Crater's Claws to face, attack with Storm Breath. That would have been... Yeah. In, in yeah. the way it actually... Well, pretty close it, game. It was. It was a very close game. And it was one, one tiny, you know, sequencing error. And that unfortunately just kind of decided the game there, the way that the game played out there. Fair enough. Now, the sideboarding change these decks at all. Let's see if we can uh, look at, I guess, Tom's sideboard first, if I get to choose. Well, we'll do with Brian. That's fine. Um, is Dromaka's Command? Is that fight ability good here? The thing is, it doesn't still doesn't kill Storm Breath. It can't target Storm Breath because it's, it's white. Sure. Here. And Ooh, kill a Storm Breath. Ugin is not is not terrible. Mastery seems like it doesn't interact with the flyers well enough, and Hornet Nest certainly doesn't seem good enough. Arbor so, Colossus, though. Yeah, I do, I do like the Arbor Colossus, and I do like the Ugin, but that's about it, I would say. Especially since Kibler's main deck is pretty strong here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's nothing he needs to take out, is there? I mean, Xenoghost is probably the weakest, because it's kind of soft to Den Protector, Draconic Warrior, and Hasted Dragons, but... Sure. So he's got a couple of good cards to put in, nothing that he has to take out, but he gets to shave the numbers to where he likes them. Fair enough. What about uh, Tom's side? Let's see if we can look at Tom's list. So the pl Plummet, yeah, exactly. Plummet is the card I was looking for here, because Plummet kills all the dragons, which is a pretty important. Mob rule is actually pretty funny. I wonder if that's wow. an, actual, an actual thing. <laughs> uh, and then other than that, not a whole lot that I'm super interested in. But I definitely, like, Plummet and Mob Rule are both very strong. Roast is probably weak enough that you can take those out. And I like Xenoghost and Tom's deck a lot better because Kibber has way, way fewer ways to threaten it. Sure. Well, let's get down to game two. Brian Kibler up a game, trying to advance to the semis for only the second time this season. Trying to escape last place and trying to set up the mirror match against uh, Kenji Egashira slash Paul Cheon in the semis. That would be a 
pretty pretty funny way to end up. <laughs> the, the, the Naya Dragon's mirror here. Yeah, it's a card for card mirror if we get there. Tom's hand is exactly what he's looking for, though. He's got Rattleclaw into Thunderbreak into Stormbreath. He doesn't even need this Corsair. So it does a pretty good job of racing, and Kibler is looking at setting up a turn six Atarka here. So You just skip Corsair if you're Tom, right? Straight to the Thunderbreak? Oh, yeah. You, you want to apply pressure. You have enough lands. You can cast all your spells. Then you just want to try to get the beatdowns. Mm -hmm. Atarka just got another turn faster with that Elvish Mystic. Carry added on top. Shuffle that away with a windswept teeth, yeah. Yeah, you don't. You're not really interested in drawing that. I guess he could scry it away if he prefers, but yeah, windswept teeth. Well, this way you can also play Elvish Mystic, which was a pretty good draw. Oh, sure. And then you're drawing a forest. So you're not drawing any six drops, unfortunately, but you've got a seven drop lined up. So and Tom doesn't have a way to stop this. Tom doesn't have a way to kill any of the mana creatures right now. So Tom is gonna. Smash for 8, put Kibler to 13. Kibler's going to go to 14. Tom's going to smash for 6. And then Atarka gets to come down and kill Thunderbreak, but Tom's also played a Corsair by then and has Haven. This looks like a close game. Yeah. We should try to get Brian's library moved over by Brian's deck. Temple of Abandon is revealed. So Brian has drawn Elvis Mystic, which is nice, but in a, in a Corsair, actually, I guess, but... This, yeah, Dramoko is like a turn after you wanted to see it, and uh, yep. Tom or Kibler's got four lands in hand and a seven drop. So the, the biggest thing is if Tom draws a way to kill Elvish Mystic here, then it's huge. Also, if Tom draws... Crater Skull is just lethal. Crater Skull is just, it's just over. He's hitting for eight anyway. He'll be at six mana next turn. And not quite monstrous the storm breath time, but getting close. Tom draws Chandra. That was a great draw. Get to kill Elvish Mystic, and then it makes Dramoka unable to block, which is huge. Wow. So Tom, Tom actually just just won the game. Sounds right. Because next turn. Once you kill Elvish Mystic, next turn Kibler's play as Dramoka, which you know you beat off of uh, off of Chandra. Meanwhile, Thunderbreak and Stormbreath attacking for eight. Yeah, Ryan turn, falls to six. Turn three, Thunderbreak, turn four, Stormbreath on the play is pretty <laughs> I mean that's what this deck's trying to do. It is a it is a pretty good opening hand. And yeah, that sh that should just, just just about seal it. I mean, we know Kibler's drawing Dragon Lord. We know Kibler can play like a land off the top, maybe, but it just that just dies to Chandra just on board right now. Yeah, and Brian sees it. So on to game three. Yeah, that that was a, that was exactly how Tom drew it up. Uh, the only thing that could have been different is he may, maybe if he draws like a plummet or something, he can uh, make it so even if Kibler plays Dramoka, you get to just knock her right out of the sky, which is good for a red-green deck. I mean, it's always funny to me when Plummet sees play because it's such a, like, it's a low-powered card. It's, like, a pretty basic card. It, but, you know, it is what decks want to do, and the dragon when dragons are good, Plummet does get better. Indeed. So, game three, Ryan Kibler on the play. Trying to get, is that enough to swing this matchup in his favor? I, it, it's huge when they're both... They both have a critical turn that's very close to each other. Kibler's is when he plays a 6 or 7 mana spell. Tom's is when he delivers lethal with his 4 and 5 mana spells. Those numbers are so close that uh, being on the play means that... You know, if Kibler can just untap with a Dramoka, he's usually in pretty good shape. Or if he can slam an Atarka, he's almost always stabilized. So he has an, more of an opportunity to do that in, in when he's on the play. He would have been able to this game, for example. All right. Are those guys ready for game 3 yet? Let's get down to it. One game to see whether Tom can move on and uh, tie for a playoff position or whether Brian can at least stay alive for one. And Kibler, if he loses here, might almost be 
close to him just being eliminated. Like he he at that well, point he's also, only ten ten points behind behind Andrew. Andrew so, also lost this week, so right. I think it'll be down to the two of them for last. Is what it comes down to. So looks like Kibler's Mulligan to six on the play here. Ooh, and Tom has Barrage of Boulders in his deck. A way to kill mana creatures and just to, to make it so Dromoka can't block. That is interesting. Cute. Yeah, Brian's keeping one land, one scry land, six cards. It seems like you have to keep that, right? Well, it's like keeping a one... It's equivalent to keeping a one-lander on the draw. So if you think this hand's a, a keeper on the draw, but slightly better because you are on the play instead. So, you, you know, you, you, you have a presumably a little bit more time. I think it's a reasonable keep on six, and Kibler did semi-hit. He hit a, he hit a, another tap land, which is definitely better than missing, but not as good as hitting an untapped land. Tom's got a nice sequence of plays here. He gets to play Thunderbreak starting on turn four. And that lines up very well against Kibler's can. Kibler's coming out like a normal draw. You know, you'd have no idea he was on a one-lander. Mm -hmm. But Kibler doesn't have a trump for Stormbreath right now. So even though Tom is not going to play Stormbreath till after Kibler plays Corsair or Xenagos, right now the double Stormbreath is way far ahead of what Kibler has. Kibler's hand is great against Thunderbreak with that hidden Dragon Slayer. But, uh, you know, again, pretty big fail that a uh, Dragon Slayer cannot slay this particular dragon. Draws Draconic Roar. Carried doing what it does best, which is survive. <laughs> Corsair finds a land immediately. Also doing what it does best. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Tom's library is now face up in the middle of the table. Should get moved over toward his side of the board. Kibber playing his own Corsair. Kibber doesn't care about getting a Xenagos out. He would much rather just dig to dragons. And with uh, Wooded Foothills, he gets to shuffle away cards like the other Xenagos, the God of Revels, which he certainly is not that interested in. Oh, Ryan's going to shuffle. And now the Parade of Storm Breath Dragons is going to begin from Tom Ross. <laughs> Kibler still found a Xenagos. <laughs> uh, something even worse, wondering. Is yeah, the, Planeswalker. The, the duplicate Planeswalker that's not going to do a ton here, whereas Tom is really just going to start slamming Storm Breaths. We did get to see God of Rebels team up with Dragon Lord of Target. That was that, that, was, that was impressive. I've never seen that happen before. It was uh, it ended the game, which you know, <laughs> it did is about what you would expect. Tom deciding which land to play here. Haven or Mountain, clearly not, not, not Mana Confluence. Elect for the Mountain. And Tom deciding now whether he wants to play around Atarka because he could Draconic Roar the, the Rattleclaw instead of playing Stormbreath. Mm -hmm. But... Looks like he's oh he's just gonna kill them all. He's gonna barrage of boulders and then <laughs> and then draconic roar. All right, that works. Barrage of boulders deals one to everything, killing the mystic and putting one point onto courser, so that now draconic roar can finish off the courser. And oh by the way, he gets in for two points with his own courser. Yeah, and that's it, uh, stunted Brian a bit. And he knows Kibler's drugs gonna go, so Kibler's now gonna make a token and pass. And then Tom gets to untap and storm breath and just devour the Xenagos here. Yep. Interesting. Not the most beatdown approach to this hand from Tom, but I think I like it. No, that made a lot of sense. I, I like that play. He's doing a good job restricting Kibler's mana. Even if Kibler were to draw a Dragon Lord, mm -hmm. then I, uh, you wouldn't be able to cast it right now. Now, here comes Stormgrass. Presumably going to attack Xenagos rather than Brian. Yeah, I, I think if you're on the Mana Denial plan, you can't do otherwise. 
and he doesn't know there's a backup, probably would make the same play anyway, given the mana denial strategy he's gone with. And here's Elvish Mystic. All right, land for Brian. And the and the 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 the, the clock doesn't change significantly because you get to go second storm breath, tacky freight, tacky freight. All right, face down Dragon Slayer. And Brian not going to bother with the Xenagos. Doesn't want to feed it to a Storm Breath. Makes sense. Yeah. Well, we, we have. Kimber has one more draw step here. So it's got to be a pretty good one, too. It can't be a Dromoko. It actually has to. It has to be an Atar card. I mean, that, that is the card that Kipper wants here. I guess, presumably, a. Oh. <laughs> presumably, a. Let's see, there's like something like Arbor Colossus Help. Because Storm Breath can actually go monstrous here, so mm -hmm. either either Storm Breath is lethal right now. <laughs> yeah, Kibler is basically just dead here. Sounds well, right. Tom played more dragons in his deck than Kibler did, so clearly he, he, he did something right. Crazy. Yeah, and Kibler can't even actually cast a Tarka. <laughs> He's one short. Wow. Tom Ross, ladies and gentlemen. Through to the semis. Pretty interesting first round. And we do, in fact, get not quite the mirror, but the rematch. Yep. Tom, having taken down one Naya Dragon's deck, is going to have to play against another one in the hands of uh, Kenji Egashira. Subbing in for Paul Chion. Uh The match we're going to watch first, though, is we'll get Brad Nelson and Owen Turtenwald up and running, uh, check in on their side of the bracket. I do want to take a uh, quick break uh, when we come back. Uh, maybe we have time to get a get a chat with Tom about the Green Red Dragons that he's running this week. Uh, meanwhile, we will definitely make sure we get Brad and Owen queued up for you guys to watch in the semifinals. So stay tuned. We will be back momentarily. <laughs> 